1420, ESPN1420.com. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back into Thinking Out Loud on this Monday morning. And I uh, want to welcome in a very special guest this morning. Uh, mentioned earlier, the legendary Dwight Bolamore in the house. Bo, good morning, my friend. How are you? Fine in yourself. I'm, uh, I'm, doing, uh, I'm doing fabulous. Before we talk about, well, a lot of things, uh, tell everybody what you're doing in town right now. Uh, I'm here to, uh, there's a game tonight, and I'm going to present the game ball to the officials. But more than that, next Sunday, they're going to uh, induct Coach Shipley into the uh, UL Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. So I'm also here for that. Yeah, I know that, that that's that's something that's near and dear to you. I'm going to let you talk about that in a second. But if you're if you're unfamiliar with Bo, where you been? I mean, over 3,400 uh, points while at uh, while at UL. I, I think it's still ranked second all time in NCAA history. Bo led the uh, the nation in scoring as a sophomore uh, with the uh, with the Cajuns. Um, averaged thirty six points per game. And uh, you know when you talk Cajun basketball, uh, it, it, it I don't want to say it starts and stops with Bo, but certainly you know Bo Lamar, Andrew Tony, Marvin Winkler, you know all those guys right at the uh, right at the uh, at the top of the list. And um, Bo, I, I do want to talk a little bit about your career, but I, I know that you know Coach Shipley being inducted, I know that's something that's that's very near and dear to you. It is. Uh, it's long overdue. Uh, I'm not going to put my personal feelings on it. I'm just glad that it's happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, and I think that's kind of the – and, look, I, I talked to you, and in, in, in we were kind of joking, but it's true. I think I saw you play a game – you know, when I was like six years old, you know, but you don't, you don't really remember, you know, I'm talking about, I, I got visions of it, but I, I don't really remember. And I was joking with Bo is I remember Bo more as being the color analyst for, for Cajun basketball than, uh, than anything. I remember you as the coach of Holy Rosary <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then, uh, but, but so I don't remember coach Shipley, but hearing people talk about him and all the people that, that loved him and all the people that respected him. I just get the feeling now that, and it's good to see that instead of being upset about maybe the past, now I think a lot of people are just saying, hey, okay, it's great that it finally happened, and now let's move on. Is that pretty much your mentality? Uh, yes, especially, you know, the, the people that were around Coach uh, that knew him, uh, knew what he stood for, and it was just a great thing that he did. And that's something that everybody that is that UL should be proud of. Mm-hmm. No, there's no doubt about it. Now, uh, uh, before we move on to some other things, uh, tell people what, what 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 you've been doing. You're back home in your uh, home state of Ohio. I'm back in Columbus, Ohio, and it's warmer in Columbus, Ohio than it is here. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about moving back, <laughs> I, but right now I'm retired. So I'm basically just having fun with some of my uh, old classmates. It's amazing how many of us are still around. We play cards and mm-hmm. and tell lies and, <laughs> and have fun. I understand. Now, um, how did uh, – I know you've answered it, probably answered this question, uh, you know, a thousand times, but let's make it a thousand and one. How did somebody from uh, Columbus, Ohio, um, get recruited and come down here to play basketball at, was then, at what was then the University of Southwestern Louisiana? Well, uh, Marvin Winkler did a good job, but really Peyton Townsend really sold me – uh, on coming here, but and even after I came from my visit, I wasn't going to come here because I said, man, the town is too small. Mm-hmm. And uh, when TV went off, they were playing Dixie. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I said, well, man, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not coming back there. Then fate uh, stuck uh, its head in. And I really can't explain it, but I, I was here and, and the rest is history. And the rest is uh, is history. You've uh, you played on some on some great teams though, and and you know the word great is often overused, but you played on some really great basketball teams during your your time there. Did uh, you know you know looking back at it and the way college basketball is played today, and you know with the sixty four teams in a bracket, do you, you think that if you know that team was put into you know the, the the way the brackets run run today, that you can make a deep run in the NCAA tournament? Oh, definitely, without a doubt, and. Uh... I mean, I remember when it was 24. So, yeah. Uh, and I think we were supposed to host a team because we were cruising along at 20-something and two, I think. And they said, okay, you're going to host a game, but you're going to host it in Ames, Iowa. So, 
And that year, uh, we played Houston, the University of Houston, I think three times that year. They were kind of getting trying to get rid of us, and we were independent. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was a lot of politics and, and, and things. And I did play on a great team. You don't average 36 points by yourself. So. <laughs> No, no, you, you did not average 36 <laughs> points by by yourself. That, that That's for sure. But, um, you know, you were such a great scorer. But at the same time, do you think that you were underrated, your, your all-around game? Because from people that I talked to said, you know, you were a really good defensive player as, as well. And that you could have been, even if you couldn't shoot a lick, that you could have been a college basketball player and gotten a scholarship strictly by defense. Do you think you were underrated? No, who was that guy that said that? <laughs> I, wanna, I want him as my best friend. <laughs> I, I, I tried to play the game as hard as I could all the time, and I, I did hustle. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't the best defensive player, but, I mean, I could have played defense. And, and, and you played for Coach Shipley, you had to play defense. I could still hear him in my ear talking about, you got to take the lick. <laughs> Not in practice, Coach. <laughs> What what kind of a coach was he? I mean, was he a player's coach that, that could be hard on you at times? I mean, well, well, how would you describe him? He was a player coach that was hard on you all the time. Yeah. Uh, myself and my friend Steve was talking about we rode by Black Coliseum, and we said we could still see Denny Wright and Garland Williams up at the top of the Coliseum <laughs> running laps. So, uh, but he was a fair man. Yeah. Fair man, and he just demanded that you play hard. Talking to the legendary Dwight Bolamar here uh, this morning. Cajun Stein at Black and Coliseum taking on Delaware State. I, I say that, Bo, you know, Black and Coliseum, it's, 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 it's where you played. Is there any moment or any game that stands out in your mind, you know, for, from Black and Coliseum? I mean, when I say Black and Coliseum, what, what, what immediately comes to your mind? Oh, a lot of great memories. Um, the thing that I really remember the most is that the last college game, home game of my career, everybody was excited because they put new lights in the Coliseum. I mean, in uh, yeah, in the Coliseum. And it was so bright in there, and I could see everything. I had the worst shooting night I think I had in my college career. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you. I, and of course, I want to talk about your basketball career, but I, I mentioned you as a—you um, uh, you worked for Schilling for a number of years, sure and, did. and and you uh, also worked as a, a color analyst with uh, w with Don. But th there's something that kind of stands out in my mind when the Cajuns won. What was it? 80, 81. They won the Great Alaskan Shootout. They came back home to play New Orleans. Okay, and there was a player named Oscar Taylor, and two shots in. I mean, he made his first two shots, and you said on the air that the Cajuns might be in trouble because this guy has it tonight. This was after only two shots. Can a shooter, can a former player, and I guess the answer is yes, otherwise you wouldn't have said it, but can a shooter, a former player, look at another player, a score on another team, and see that he's going to have a good night just by, by two shots, just by his form or whatever? Can you actually do that? Well, you could you could tell you could tell by his attitude and, and the way that he took the two shots, and and if even if he would have missed them, uh, he would probably still would have had a great game after that. I mean, it's just it's 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 an air about it, you know. And it's like uh, people say you're in a zone. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't describe that, but you can see talent. Mm -hmm. and I, I wish you, I wish you would have been wrong that night, but you were right. <laughs> Now, of course, after you played uh, with the Cajuns, you played in both the uh, the ABA and the uh, and the NBA. You had some success. Uh, we hear a lot of stories about the ABA, but it, it it seemed like a fun league to play in. Did you enjoy your time there? Immensely. I mean, it was it was not like it was a lot of young guys who just kind of like liked each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we went to play San Antonio. George Gervin would uh, invite you over to his house. Uh, then when you got to the NBA, it was like a cast system. Mm -hmm. You know, if you hadn't been there, you know, you rookies, you carried the bags, you did all of that kind of thing. Uh, the ABA was big fun and had a whole lot of talent. And uh, they should have stayed around. But they wanted to merge with the NBA so bad. But we had 
basically, we have basically all the young centers and young basketball players. For example, we had uh, Moses Malone, Artis Gilmore, Poe, David Thompson, yeah. George McGinnis, Iceman, Julius Irving. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, uh, John Y. Brown, who was the owner of the Kentucky Colonel, suggested that we buy our own radio uh, TV station. But the other owners didn't want to do that, so they faded away. And a lot of them went on to great NBA careers. I um, I did see you play in the ABA. I think it was Indiana that you played with. And, of course, I, I saw you play with the with the Lakers. I think that was your last year in professional basketball with the uh, – uh, with the Lakers, what was your you, 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 your time in Los Angeles? Do you have fond memories of the uh, Laker organization? Oh yeah, uh, Jerry West, Kareem, all of them. I mean, it's it's a saying around the Lakers like once you're a Laker, you're always a Laker, and I truly believe that. No doubt about it. The uh, the uh, legendary Dwight Bolamore, our guest this morning, Cajuns hosting Delaware State tonight, seven o'clock tip off at the uh, at Black and Coliseum. You you um, you. Um, you you have you average thirty six points a game, and and I hear people talking about you know how four used to shoot, and and they, they say that you could have averaged like forty five points per game if it was played right now. What are your thoughts on that, though? I mean, did 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 they let you? I don't want to say let you shoot from out there, but you know, you know what I'm saying. I mean, if the three point line would have been in vogue when, when, when you were playing, do you think they would have came out on you a little bit more? Are you, are you think you could have averaged 40 points a game with the three-point line? If I had Marvin Winkler, I probably <laughs> could. But, uh, I don't think so because, like you said, they would have had to come out. I mean, if they didn't come out, then, I mean, that was suicide. Mm-hmm. So they would have had to come out, and which was fine with me. But I... Yeah, I don't think I would have let you shoot because you had the ability to drive by people also, didn't yeah. you? So yeah, I mean, I would rather you shoot from twenty five feet out than you just blow by me and lay it up. Well, you would have lost. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, but it's still two points. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Is, I mean, yeah. But you're going to have help, yeah. you know. So uh, even back when I averaged thirty six points a game, people were trying to push me into help, which is what they had to do. Uh-huh. But we had such a great team; it was either, like you said. Take the risk of me missing twenty a shot from twenty feet, or letting Roy Ebron and Tree and Peyton and them get layups. You hear the criticism nowadays that that there aren't enough great shooters. What? Why do you think that that is? Do you, do you think that 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 kids nowadays they want to take it to the rim a little bit too much? They don't practice shooting from outside. Why do you think there aren't as many great shooters now as there were when you played? I think there's there's probably just as many, but the thing is now, like ESPN, uh, they see all the guys that play pros. They see them dunking. They see them doing things, dribbling between their legs. It's a it's a part of the game that's lost, but I've seen a couple of players in the, in the NBA bring it back, and that's the mid range mid range uh, mid range game. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's guys like Tony Parker and uh, the guy from Toronto. I can't think of his name right now. De Ro- DeRozan. Uh, you give me a guard that can penetrate and then pull up and take that little mid range shot. Mm-hmm. You are in trouble. No, there's not. So a lot of people want to go to the rim, get fouled. Yeah. Uh, but you take that little mid-range shot, Kyrie Irving is, uh-huh. is a great example yeah. of that. So I think that part of the game is lost. What made you such a great shooter? I mean, did, did you work on it a lot when you were a kid? I mean, or is it just was like it was a natural talent to you? I mean, what made you a great shooter? I worked on it. Uh, part of it was God-given, but I worked on it. And I, one of the things that make me feel good is guys who I played against would tell me, even today, like when we're playing cards, they said, man, we go to the playground and we would always see you out there playing. And he's, you know, working on your game, working on your shot. And that's what it takes. You got to shoot them to make them. So you got to (laughs) practice. And then you got to have that attitude. My attitude was every shot that I shot, I actually thought it was going Mm -hmm. in. So if I had any advice to give to any kid or anything, just work on your shot. Have confidence in it. If you don't think it's going in, then it's not. You spent a lot of time, though, uh, here in this community. And, you know, uh, not only 
you know, while while obviously you were playing here, I mean, you had to, you had no choice. But after your professional career was over, you came back here, and I mentioned you, you went to work here, and you, you did a lot of work here, and then, uh, you know, you wound up as a, a high school basketball coach here. What about this area uh, uh, made you come back? What did you like about Lafayette and the Acadiana area? I never left. I mean, I came back every summer, even when I was playing uh, professional basketball. So I love the people. Uh, I mean, that's all I can say, mm -hmm. the people and the food, the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> it is a special kind of place. Even though you, you, you don't live here anymore, you're, you, you still feel, I mean, you hear the name Dwight Bolamore just, you know, around the Acadian area. I do sometimes. It, it's 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 like you still here, haven't left, and will always be here. I mean, do do you feel that you'll always be a part of the Acadian area and part of this university? Of course, and uh, I am thinking about moving back. You know, I'm just uh, when I turn 66, which won't be long, because I do miss this place, mm -hmm. and I got grandkids here, and I got daughters here, and a whole lot of friends here. So I'm really leaning about moving back. Wow, that's a uh, that's that's good stuff. Now you, you you look pretty good. Do you do what, what do you do? Anything to stay in shape? Do you stay active? Uh, Other than lie, like you said, play cards and lie. <laughs> I, was, I, was I was trying to think of a lie just then, but not really. You know, uh -huh. I just uh, I just feel good. Just just sit around all day watching the people score. And, and I hide my weight. Take, take us a day, a regular day through Dwight Bolamore. Now, I mean, let, let's you you retired. I mean, what, 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 you you not a golfer. Yeah, I play golf. Okay, play golf. Yeah, play golf. Uh, one of the best things, like I said, is that I wake up, I eat, uh, go play cards with my friends, mm -hmm. and uh, come back home, watch Madlock, take me a nap, <laughs> wake up. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I like that. That's the way. Uh -huh. Watch the news, uh -huh. and then do whatever I want to do. So you watch uh you watch a whole lot of basketball nowadays college in the, uh, in the NBA I watch not as much as people would think mm -hmm. but I watch uh LeBron James I'm a Le LeBron James fan so you were pulling for Cleveland last year in the finals I was too oh yeah yeah oh yeah he he he, he gets hammered by a lot of people I mean I, I just think just over the top because they want to compare him to Michael Jordan all the time, and that's just, like, unfair. I mean, I, I look at LeBron James, and I say, just what a great basketball player. Just somebody to watch. I mean, he could pass it. He could defend. And let, let, let me see how, if you agree with me here. I, I hear all this talk about, oh, a guy could play two, three different positions. Well, you could have probably played the point, probably played the two, and maybe even played the three. But I, I think there are a lot of offensive guys that could do that. But I think w when I hear... Oh, he could play multiple positions. I want to see if he could defend multiple positions. And I look at a guy like LeBron James, and I think he could defend four, maybe even all five positions. He can, and 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 you're right. It's it's easier to play uh, the positions on offense mm -hmm. because I could even play power forward on offense mm -hmm. because then the power forward has to come out and guard me. That's right. But yeah. Now when I go back on the other end, I can't check a power forward. Right. So uh, yeah, on offense you can't do that. Defensively you can't. LeBron can play all five positions. I go to the games in Cleveland, and I've watched him do it. I've watched him guard centers. I've watched him guard point guards. I watched him chase down guards on a fast break from baseline to baseline and block the <laughs> shot. Yeah. yeah, it's almost uh, should be illegal. He's six eight. He plays <laughs> at two hundred and seventy pounds, uh -huh. and he can run like a deer. Uh, so. He's 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 pretty special. He I tell you, somebody else who's pretty special in terms of embracing the past and. Coach Marlin knows how I feel about this because I've known to him. Is I think that as one of the things I love about him as a basketball coach is that he has embraced the past. And, you know, he, and not only that, a, a lot of coaches say they embrace the past, and it's not that they don't, but he is he has fought for it, is what I like about Coach Marlin. And 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 I think he wants to uh I, I think he wants to embrace the past because it it uh it helps his basketball team out in the in the current situation too. But I, I think Coach Mullen's a big basketball fan. He appreciates the history of UL basketball, and he wants to continue to, you know, embrace the history. What's your thoughts on on Coach Marlin and the, or what you know of him? Uh, I think you're exactly right. Um, if you don't embrace the history, there's no future. Mm -hmm. So uh, I really like what he did in, in 
getting Coach Shipley out in the forefront and getting Coach Shipley his due desserts, and uh, my hat is off to him for that. Who was your best friend, roommate, whatever you want to call it on on the team when you played? Peyton Townsend. Peyton Townsend. Great player, too, wasn't he? Yes, yes. I mean, he gets overlooked a little bit because of yourself and, and Marvin Winkler, but Peyton Townsend, from what I understand, and statistically speaking, one of the best forwards you could find. I still think he holds the percentage uh, for shooting percentage in uh, UL and USL basketball history, if I'm not mistaken. And plus, his mommy used to send some great care packages. <laughs> <laughs> On the road in in, in professional uh, professional basketball, if you if if you could if you could remember, what was the what was the best city that you had in terms of food? Ooh, New Orleans. Oh, there you go. Yeah, easy yeah, one. That's, yeah, that's that was a little bit easier one than than, than I than I thought. Oh yeah. <laughs> now everybody, uh, the, uh, they don't have many video much video of you when you played, un- unfortunately. But one of the things I see all the time, you probably know what I'm talking about. The, the the 360 correct where where, where um I I talk about you being a little bit underrated and and that's kind of what I'm talking about too you were a ter- wasn't just you know nowadays we, we view shooter and it, it's almost like a catch and shoot guy you know what I'm talking right. about you were a tremendous athlete thank you um but I mean your skill set do, do you see that in a lot in a lot of players nowadays yes I mean it's 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 Basketball is probably uh, as good as it's been, mm-hmm. but it's just. See, I agree with you. The, the the league has changed, the rules are changed. Uh, back when I played, you could hand check, mm-hmm. so you can't hand check anymore. And uh, I would have loved to play under those rules, and I would have loved to have had the three point shot and all that, which we did in the ABA, but. Yeah, it, it's a lot of great basketball players, and it, and it has a lot to do with the exposure, like ESPN. To be yeah. uh, perfectly honest, you know, so if I'd have had ESPN, I'd probably be a millionaire by now. <laughs> you know, I, I argue with people all the time. They say that the NBA doesn't play defense anymore. I think the NBA players play best they've ever played. It's why guys like Adam Morrison, um, and I want to name another guy because I don't want to make it seem like I'm picking on him, but. I think there's a lot of guys like Adam Morris, and that's the reason why they're not playing in the NBA because they just they simply can't get off a shot nowadays. And yeah, and, and I was fortunate, and you know, I played with some great players, and I played under some great coaches. And if you can imagine this, we had a layup line when I was a rookie, and a lot of people won't realize this first name I'm getting ready to say, but Caldwell Jones. Oh yeah, played, number eleven. Yeah, played uh, 22 oh, yeah. years, I believe, at NBA. We had to dribble and shoot right-handed on him and then come down on the other side and shoot left-handed and on Will Chamberlain. So, <laughs> <laughs> Best of luck with that. You had to get better or your shot was getting blocked. Wow. So. That's a, now, tonight, Peyton Townsend is going to join you as an honorary captain. I can't wait. I mean, so that's going to be that's going to be just that's cool to see. I mean, really cool if if you watch Bull play and you watch Peyton Townsend play, you want to be there at Black and Coliseum tonight as the Cajuns take on uh, uh take on Delaware State. A lot of great memories from uh from Bull, a lot of great memories for the uh f- for the uh for the Cajuns. To wrap it up for my segment and you're going to spend a little time with Kevin Foote coming up in the uh in the uh, in the next hour. Uh tell me a little bit about Andrew Tony and what you thought about his game. Uh, I, I know that you know when he first came in, you were still playing professional basketball, but I know you saw him and especially a, a, a lot in his junior and senior years. Uh, you, you, your thoughts on him the first time that that you saw him? Did did you think that he was going to be as special as he was? Yes, I mean he was big, he was strong, and he could shoot the eyes out of the basket. So him and Joe Dumars mm-hmm. uh, from Magnese, and uh, oh yeah, you could just see it. I mean, as a freshman, he was. He had tremendous shot selection, and uh, like I said, he was big and strong, and he was quick. He had that first step, and uh, and a lot of people said, well, they're comparing you to Andrew Tony." I said, I didn't mind being compared to Andrew <laughs> Tony. <laughs> and before I let you go, Bo, getting back to um, uh, to Coach Shipley here for, for just a second, it, it's, it's, it's funny because most of his former players that I talked to Kind of said exactly what what you were saying. Boy, he could be awfully hard on you at sometimes, but they all said it in kind of a loving way, and they all said that 
you yeah, on you, but when it came down to cases, he would be there for you. And because of that, his players would run through a wall for him. And they would. And and, and that's what made him who he was. Mm -hmm. I have nothing but admiration for Coach Shipley. Unbelievable. 34,000 career points, second all-time in, in college. That's something that you don't have to lie about, Bo, when you, when you talk about uh, – when you talk to your friends in Columbus, Ohio. I mean, that's – they can, trust me, they they can't score thirty five hundred points in a video game. Well, you said thirty four thousand, so I'm gonna hold you. To oh, that. okay. <laughs> we'll give them. A, we'll give them a few more. The three point line. Everybody says, "Oh, Bolomar would have scored sixty thousand points." Can't stop him. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Boy, I appreciate you. Uh, you joined me this morning. Yeah, I know you're gonna spend a little time with uh, with Kevin, but uh, thanks for all you've done for the university and for this uh, for this community. And uh, good to see that the um, that the basketball program is certainly embracing the past, and I know you're thrilled about that as well. Thanks for having me.